Now we get to find the composition of rational expressions. Here's our example. Now we're getting into the more tough stuff. For your quiz, what are we looking for? We're looking for the composition of these two. We'll talk about the domain in a moment, next video. But now, what we want to do is we want to first look at f of g of x. That is literally f of g of x. Well, what do we do? We take f, and inside f we put g. What's g? That's 1 over 1 plus 2x. And then, what's next? Well, everywhere in f we see an x, we put that guy. So, we go and we do do that. I'm going to write my f devoid of the x's. And then, everywhere I see an x, I'm now going to put a 1 over 1 plus 2x. And then here, I'm going to put a 1 over a 1 plus 2x. All right. I'm ready to take it on down here. Why did I do that? Because now I have a complex fraction, and let me write that. This is 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 2x all over 2 over 1 plus 2x. Now you probably want to watch the video on complex rational expressions, but if you don't have the time to clear the fractions, you're going to multiply both sides by the common denominator. When I say both sides, I mean top and bottom numerator and denominator by 1 plus 2x. And 1 plus 2x. Why? Because you're trying to rid yourself of a complex fraction. So you take that action, and it goes oon, oon, and then here, they go straight across. And then when we do, do that, we end up with 1 plus 2x minus 1, and you're like, why? Well, that's because when this guy multiplied by that guy, that product is 1, and that going to all over, these guys also reduce, and you see you're dividing by a deuce. So you clean that up, and when you do, the ones, uh, uh, and you have a 2x over 2, those also reduce, uh, uh, and you're left with x. Yeah, because they're inverses of each other. So now you can take that idea of inverses and know that g of f of x is also equal to x, or you can calculate that sucker out. This is g of f of x, because that's how that composition goes. It goes from right to left, a little backwards. That's g of 1 minus x over 2x. What's next? <clears throat> Everywhere in G, you see an X. You're not going to put that. Let me put a nice, whoa, dividing line between the two problems. So this is 1 plus 2 times my new X. My new X is that F of X. And that's going to be 1 minus X over 2X. There we go. So now things are looking good. Let me just go ahead and get rid of these twos. Why? Because it's all multiplication. And now I'm going to take it right on down here. I'm working with a small canvas, so you see that it's rather compact. So then I act by writing 1 over 1 plus. Those twos are now gone, and I'm left with 1 minus x over x, because those two reduce because they are just multiplication. So now I add these fractions down here, these guys, boom. And in order to do that, I call that a 1, 1. And then I need to get a common denominator in order to add fractions. And in order to do that, I multiply this by x over x. So what's next? Let me get back to black here. This is going to be 1 over x 
over x plus 1 minus x over x. Now in that denominator, you have a common denominator. So then you can add their numerators. And you have x plus 1 minus x all over x. And you ask, what's next? Well, I'll tell you. You have additive inverses. Uh, uh, so those are gone. And now what do you have? You have 1 over 1 over x. And the biggest over is that one right there. So then dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of this guy. And you find that one is also x. Box and flower. Let's take a look at domain.